This news update is brought to you by... Say hello to Carol. Carol talks for a living from morning till night. So she relies on Flo's crystal clear home phone service brought to her through Flo's 100% fiber to the home network. It keeps her in the know. And because she bundles her mobile broadband and TV services, she enjoys huge savings. So she can enjoy much more for much less. So visit any Flo retail outlet, call 1-800-804-2994 or visit discoverflow.co to find out more. One of a kind connection. This is how we flow. It's Thursday, March the 24th, 2016, and this is your Barbados Today Morning News Update. I'm Emmanuel Joseph. Thanks for joining us. In our top story, after seven days on the picket line and with no clear signs of a settlement to their bitter pay dispute, the 20,000-member strong Barbados Workers' Union is about to step up the pressure on the state-run Barbados Water Authority. Yesterday, the union called out all of its public sector affiliates for a meeting at its Solidarity House headquarters, at which a visibly upset and emotional General Secretary Tony Moore indicated that the dispute had now gone past the point of empathy. In fact, Moore labeled the behavior of the authorities' management as nothing short of arrogance, while complaining that not a word or an apology had been uttered by the BWA over its failure to adhere to the union's March 10, 2016 deadline for the supply of data on $33 million in outstanding increments owed to the workers. Empathy alone will not suffice. We are past that and a firm proposal, a meaningful proposal, will have to be tabled first to deter us from any action that considers ratcheting up first within the public sector and then within the entire BW family. Meanwhile, Minister of Labour Dr. Esther Bayastuku says there is no easy fix to the dispute over increments at the Barbados Water Authority. In fact, while agreeing with her ministerial colleague, Dr. David Eswick, that the issue was a very complex one, she said the BWA may need to get professional help in resolving the matter, which is at the heart of a now seven-day-old dispute by the island's water workers. Bersaku, who intervened in the bitter impasse Tuesday, therefore suggested that it would be a waste of time for her to invite the disputing parties to the bargaining table without having such a proposal from the BWA to form the basis of any negotiations. The proposal itself, I think both sides understand that the proposal, the material subject matter is very complex and both sides understand that they were actually at a technical committee trying to wade through the information. So it is complex but it is where the communication dried up that we have this. So I'm trying to reopen that line of communication and help them also to get the resources from the ministry that they can actually bring a proposal that um, makes sense, a proposal that would be mutually acceptable because it would have to be afford affordable to the Barbados Water Authority as well. We understand that there, that there are challenges too with the financing at the Barbados Water Authority. So they could not commit to, for example, $33 million right away. In more news now, amid rising economic anxiety, a visiting economics professor has put pay to any hopes of an immediate turnaround as he delivered a stern warning to Barbados and its Caribbean neighbors that more economic doom and gloom lay directly ahead. Professor Simon Johnson, the former chief economist at the International Monetary Fund, the IMF, made the grim prediction as he addressed the Third Caribbean Economic Forum at the Grand Salle Central Bank on the topic, what is next for the global economy? The senior fellow at the Peterson Institute warned that another global recession was on the way and would mostly impact countries in Europe, while cautioning Barbados and its regional neighbours of the spillover effects on the likely downturn. In sports now, the tournament director of one of tennis's most prestigious events has resigned after saying that female players should get down every night on their knees to thank some of their male counterparts. Raymond Moore stepped down as the CEO and tournament director of the BNP Paribas Open, better known as simply as Indian Wells, 
after making his comments on Sunday. Arguably the greatest women's tennis player of all time, Serena Williams is calling remarks made by the CEO of Indian Wells offensive and disappointing. Raymond Moore, a co-founder of the BNP Paribas Open, made these disparaging remarks before the women's final. They ride on the coattails of the men. They don't make any decision, then they're lucky. They're very, very lucky. I, if I was a lady player, I'd go down every, every night on my knees and thank God that a Roger Federer and a Rafa Nadal were born because they've carried the sport. Moore has been the CEO at Indian Wells since 2012. He's a 69-year-old former pro tennis player himself. During the presser, he also made mention of the physical attractiveness of current women's players. He has since said his comments were erroneous. After her Indian Wells final loss to Victoria Azarenka, Serena let her feelings regarding Moore's comments be known. There's only one way to interpret that, get on your knees which is offensive as enough, and thank a man, which is not, we as women have come a long way, and um, we shouldn't have to drop to our knees at any point. There's regional and international news after this short break. Turning out to news from the region, the children of financially struggling parents in St. Lucia will from next year be able to sit CXCs free of charge. Prime Minister Dr. Kennedy Anthony told a mass meeting of his ruling St. Lucia Labour Party that the government will meet the cost of CXC exams as a means of bringing relief to poor people. My only problem is this. I don't want a government just to pay CXC fees and then the children fail. I want a system that will reward performance with support. And I promise you that come next year, not this year because it is too late, this government will bring you relief on CXC fees. That the poor people of St. Lucia will not have to pay for CXC fees so that their children can sit examination. That's what we are about. We will continue the revolution in education. We will continue to make the difference. On the international scene, the United States has issued a warning to its citizens in Europe in the wake of deadly attacks in Brussels. The U.S. State Department alert came as shutdown of Brussels airport targeted in two of three bomb blasts Tuesday remained in place, causing disruption across the continent. We pick up the story in this CNN report. With officials warning ISIS is on the loose and a massive manhunt underway, the State Department is taking the rare step of urging Americans to think twice about traveling to Europe, warning that terrorists, quote, continue to plan near-term attacks throughout Europe, targeting sporting events, tourist sites, restaurants, and transportation. A dire assessment ahead of the summer travel season. A former House Intelligence chair says such a dramatic warning is likely the result of alarming intel, pointing to the possibility of more terror. What they know is that probably Brussels was not the only target set. Paris was not the only target set. There are likely other target sets in Europe. ISIS fighters, many trained on the battlefields of Syria, are returning home to carry out their jihad in the West, sometimes infiltrating the influx of migrants fleeing the violence. Brussels, the headquarters of the European Union and NATO, has important symbolic value and has emerged as a hub for jihadis planning European attacks. 
That's news and sport. However, you can join us again this afternoon for more. Until then, remember to log on to www.barbadostoday.bb, subscribe to our e-paper, email updates, or like us on Facebook. You can also catch us on Izumi Media in bus terminals or screenplay at supermarkets and gas stations near you. Also tune into Channel 99 on Flow TV and Mix 96.9 FM to get all the latest news and sports. I'm Emmanuel Joseph. Have a fantastic day.